the shop is open. This is the Talk About RC podcast, where we talk about RC racing, crawling, bashing, building, and dad stuff. Get back to work and listen, amigo. I'm your host, Pablo Guerrero. I am feeling especially grateful after this week. It's been a fun week, guys. Thanks for downloading this uh, this podcast. It uh, means a lot to me. I'm feeling grateful. I had a great week. I was able to uh, spend some time with my daughter, and we started a new tradition of a daddy-daughter date uh, where it's just me and her. We're doing graffiti. We're going to an art studio once a week where we can sit down and I can be creative, which is, and she can be creative, which is awesome because I do a lot of work for other people that is creative. I'm, you know, drawing every day, all that kind of stuff, but, uh, and making things every day, but it's always around other people's constraints, not mine. So this is something fun that we can do together and we can learn something together. It's been a blast and we're starting to make a new community too. So that's also cool. Um, the other thing I'm super grateful for this week it's my anniversary. I'm actually recording this as I'm sitting and waiting to drive through the car wash because we're going to go on a micro date. We're going to go see a movie, going to see Oppenheimer. I'm excited. I've been wanting to see it for a while. My wife's been wanting to see it for a while. We're both kind of nerdy in that way when it comes to that type of movie, but very grateful for her. Our kids were awesome this morning. They came in and they said, you know, happy anniversary. They brought us breakfast in bread, which was consisted of a meal that that Buddy the Elf would appreciate. Lots of chocolate and bread and marshmallows and syrup. It was impressive and it was very awesome. Uh, DRG came in and he said, thanks for getting married. Otherwise I'd be extinct, which was kind of the highlight of the morning. So very appreciative for things like that. Um, I hope you guys can make memories this week and things that you can appreciate slow down the game for you guys hopefully um, you know sometimes you got to just take a breath and and see what's happening appreciate all the little stuff around you even though life is chaotic drink it all in amigos all right so in this episode we're going to be talking about the creative process we're going to be talking about some race recap and the news a new segment If you got ideas for new segments, shoot me a message. Find me on Instagram at RC underscore Amigos. Watch our YouTube at RC underscore Amigos. Leave me a comment, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'd appreciate it. It helps us all out. So we'll see you on the podcast in the episode. Hopefully it makes sense. Here we go. Do you have tiny hands? Do you like working on small things? Then head over to ccxrc.com to get all your small scale SCX24 parts and add-ons, performance things, everything you need to make that crawler do awesome at your next local hobby shop comp. Use code RCAMIGOS at checkout to get a 5% discount at your next order at ccxrc. amigos we had an awesome weekend so this is the race recap for race number five at Die Hard RC Uh, it's not race number five for us but it's race number five overall boy did we have a fun time the racing competition was heating up let me tell you so we've had some uh, nice weather Uh, been gorgeous out here in the PNW probably averaging 82, 83 degrees, somewhere around there. And uh, this weekend, it did not let up. So it was, I don't know how hot it was outside ambient, actually. My guess is probably a high 80s on Saturday when we raced. Um, I ended up not racing. Uh, I wish I did. It was looked like a really good field for stadium. But uh, when I was going over the cars, getting them ready for the, the race, 
As soon as I finished mine, I found that I had a sheared bolt on the or a sheared screw on the bulkhead where my uh, bell cranks bolt in. So I opted to not rush it and just to kind of lay low. I brought some stuff to work on to the track. I figured I was going to work on it while the kid was out on the track racing. That didn't happen one bit. So <laughs> missed opportunity. But, you know, of course, I had fun talking to everyone. And uh, I tried to work on the monster truck track out there a little bit, but it was too hot and the dirt was, it's all clay. So it wasn't very forgiving at the time. It, I was doing it by hand and uh, I'm going to go back out there when they got the tractors going so I can help out and shape some ramps with them. So, uh, but so racing. So this race was pretty rad. So it, it's his first race on like, not his first race, second race on this track layout, first race with practice on this layout. And did he shock me? I was so proud of how he did because I saw some real race craft. He still has to work on his race etiquette. <laughs> totally. I don't know how to tell how to like beat this into him, but still has to work on race etiquette. Um, but his race craft just was leaps and bounds over where, where he had been over the last couple, couple races. So we went out and started practicing. He had a new set of tires on the back. Um, we, what else did we do? We, oh, I tuned them up a little bit. I gave him a couple degrees of timing and I also gave him one tooth on pinion and oh man did it make a huge difference so he was having a hard time hitting the triple before i mean he had to be pure clean no traffic um just you know and he had to send it from like a ways back to hit that triple this time he was actually able to hit the triple and be mid side or like mid length on the downside on the back side of the ramp so that was awesome, but <clears throat> that was our agreement. As I said, hey, if you're in traffic, double single this and then triple. I said, if you're wide open, there's no one in front of you and you're wide open, go ahead and send it. And he did. It was awesome. So first qual, he went out there. I think he, I don't know where he started. He probably started first on the first qual. And I don't think he gave up any, I don't think he gave up any positions. He might have led, the, I have to check, but I think he might have led the whole the whole track or the whole race. Um, if not, he was only down one or two. Um, but he was he was running great. And yes, he did. He double singled. Uh, I saw him do it a couple times. He was he was kind of open for most of it, so he was tripling most of them. But his we were having we started developing a problem on the first wall his front end was pushing like crazy. And I had asked one of the guys, I said, Hey, you know, what's the, what am I doing here? Uh, are his tires getting too bald on the front? Cause I just put some new, new tires on the back and they were like, Oh yeah, you need to change those tires up. So he finished the race. We took it off. Uh, we put the new tires on and Oh no, actually I take that back. This was practice. So practice, he was, uh, he was running and pushing really hard. So we, we put the new tires on in practice and at, in practice, the car was just absolutely carving hard, but the rear end was sliding out. So, and this was with a new set of tires. And so I was like, what's, what am I doing wrong? So I went and talked to one of the guys, uh, Mr. Dunn there, and he's a guru when it comes to these cars. And so that's what I love about this uh, environment here at Die Hard. Everyone's willing to help you out. Um, they just want to see it succeed. And so he, he looked at the car setup and I had too much toe in on the front end. And so that was car, making the car dive in the corners and ripping the rear end across. So he had a different set of tires. They were AKAs. Uh, we normally run J cons. They were AKAs and uh, for the rear. And we tried that. We tried running those. And we actually ran those for qual two, qual or qual one, qual two, and the, the main. Uh, and he, the tires did all right. I think the tires did well. I don't know if they did any better than the J cons that we ran. 
uh, previously, uh, just because the setup was different and with the setup being different, it was kind of hard to, to see a difference. So we're going to put, we put those other J-Cons back on and we're going to run those in practice this week and see how that goes. Um, we put new front tires on. We did, I don't remember what they were called, uh, but they had pins in the center and kind of like a lug on the shoulder. So, um, but so in practice, his last practice or one of the last practice rounds, he actually lost a spur. Um, and I, at first I thought it was the pinion that came loose because I had just changed pinions and it ended up his whole spur came off. He has a slipper eliminator on it and the spur kind of just popped off and the spur was fine, just fell off. So I reattached that, got him back out for Q1, led all of Q1, I think, pretty close to it and uh, just had a great race. You know, was uh, carving the track, still had some loose uh, back end issues, but he was carving the track well, uh, understood when to double single and then understood when to triple, went into qual two and oh, he was just on fire. He was lighting it up, flying around the track. He was on TQ pace uh, up until I think the last few, last minute or so he was on TQ pace and then he clipped the pipe and popped a ball stud. He still called second overall, and he was just off pace for the TQ. The TQ went to the guy uh, that was trying to chase him down, but had he not popped the ball stud all day, he would have been TQ, which would have been awesome to see his first TQ uh, of, of you know, his personal best, I guess. So uh, that was rad. So we went into the main, and oh my goodness. By the time mains came around, it was so hot outside. So the we have, it's a turf track, but it has carpet uh, where the jumps are. And the carpet's black, turf is green. And the carpet was at 160 something degrees. I think it was like 163. Uh, the, the, the turf was 144. It was hot. So we saw cars temping out. Uh, you know, obviously it was super high traction with that kind of heat. It, it was a, a whole other race. And what was very cool is that we saw him make the changes and understand, like the announcer was even saying that he saw how he was making clean lines through traffic and he was understanding how his car was fading at the end a little bit. So like if the battery, if everything was getting hot, we were running two fans, one on the ESC, one on the motor. But if it was getting kind of warm, you could tell that, you know, he would back off and double single or, you know, take a different line on things. It was just, it was really, really awesome seeing him making adjustments uh, without, I think probably without knowing he was making the adjustments, just driving the car. But uh, he ended up running, he, they, it was a 16th, so six minute main, he led all but five laps. And he let he jumped out front early and led from lap one all the way to lap 11 and then uh, got tied up and ran into traffic. And so second overtook him. And I think at the end of the race, I think he was down two seconds from first place. And uh, second place guy was uh, he was an experienced dirt racer uh, and he came up after us super class act talking to Dalton and Dalton was so when he when he came off the off the race stand he was pumped super pumped he was so excited because you could tell he knew he had a good race like even though he took second he knew he had a good race and I was so excited for him because he was just he was like I said he was he had the race craft down on this track so really really awesome the guy was a class act came over was like hey you know, keep on working because this kid is going to go places if he keeps on working hard. And it's nice to see that the work's paying off, you know, that the track time and the practice and, you know, kind of it's it's funny because uh, Qual 2, you know, he was being a kid out doing something. He said he was trying to smash ants with a dowel that we had and he poked himself in the eye. So he was like having problems with his eyes. I was all scratchy, all this kind of stuff. And I told him, I was like, suck it up. I was like, this is racing. And the race director was there and he was laughing at me because I was like, hey, suck it up. This is racing. Get out there. 
you know, stop rubbing your eye, just, just get out there and race. He's like, well, I can't really see well out of my, I can't, you know, track the car or whatever with my left eye. I was like, well, move your head, follow the car with your head rather than your eyes. So he went out and that's when he, uh, he almost TQ'd the, the whole thing. So, uh, it was nice seeing him kind of persevere through a little bit of that. Uh, the race paint really helped him out. We put, uh, we did a new look for his car. He was doing the red, white, and blue. Uh, that's totally his MO. And so, yeah, we had a lot of fun. At the overall, at the end of the day, he got second. We had a fantastic day. What a, like, it always comes back to this for me. It was just an awesome day to bond with him. You know, afterwards I was like, hey, you want ice cream? Let's go. And he's like, let's go to Five Guys first. So me and him went to Five Guys, filled up, and then we went to Froyo, and it was just all smiles all night long. So that's what racing's about, you know. It's uh, And now I'm hoping that at some point, both he and I can help other people, you know, if, if, if it means helping them out, doing that kind of thing. Like new people coming on, just we don't have a lot of knowledge yet, but at least we can help them break the ice and come out and say, it's okay. You know, don't be, don't be scared. Don't be worried. Come out and try it. Uh, it's, it's so worth it and so much of a benefit. And, uh, I think we're loving it. We're loving it. We can't wait to keep on going. Unfortunately, I think, uh, our season's going to be kind of tight. We've got some traveling scheduled and we're not sure what races we can make, but we know we're going to make the final. There's a GP coming, and that's the one that I really wanted him to race in because it's a good, it's a like a regional GP trophy race. But I think we're going to be out of town, unfortunately. And uh, had he raced in that, man, I think if if we know we're going to be here, we're going to practice like no other and try to get him at the top again. So, um, but yeah, no, it's been a lot of fun and. Uh, I would just say if you're looking into getting into racing or anything like that, don't be scared. Go out there and meet people and ask a lot of questions and, and go out and have fun. It's uh, It's been a fun ride this summer so far and I'm proud to see his changes and all that kind of stuff. So let's talk about racecraft real quick or not, not racecraft. Let's talk about race etiquette in the next uh, segment. So I'll toss it over to the next segment. Hope you guys stick around and uh, we'll see you then. This episode's brought to you by ScaleMetalSupplies.com. Are you trying to learn how to do some scale metal fabrication? Check out ScaleMetalSupplies.com. They got everything to get you started from tabs, from bend and braze parts. They're selling these new things called hot seats. They're scale seats for like dune buggies and uh, moon buggies. They have a fast dash, which is a bendable dash that you can put into basically anything. And they have the new Whoopa Cobra chassis, which is an awesome starting point for your pre-runner build. Use code TACOBOUTRC to get 13% off at your next purchase at ScaleMetalSupplies.com. Keep burning, guys. All right, so we're going to try a new segment. We're going to try something new. I have, I'm just, I'm just doing it live. So what we're going to do is I'm going to set a timer and I'm going to tell you the news in three minutes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this timer and when it's over, it's over. And if I get to all the stuff that's important to me, then good. And if not, well, and if I go through it too fast, we're just going to listen to dead air for the rest of the three minutes. Just kidding. So the idea is I'm going to tell you the news in three minutes, a quick hit. You can go research the rest of them. I know you guys do. If you're listening to a podcast, you probably know how to work a phone or know how to work an iPad or a computer. So you can go and look at all this stuff. But this is the kind of stuff that I think is cool, um, that I think is interesting and important. And here we go. All right. So first off, the U-Tron from Element RC has shipped. So people are starting to get those, and now that you that they're shipping, you can actually order them and see them soon. Um, I'm really excited to see what people do with this truck. Um, I think it's a silent assassin. It's a sleeper. People don't know how good it actually performs with the new IFS2. Moving on, the Charisma, uh, the Charisma, sounding old again. Charisma is releasing an M486 
for all you Subi fans, it's a Subaru rally car. It's an eight scale, I think, seven scale, something like that. Um, it's bigger. It looks cool. I'm excited about it. I, it throws me back to the days that I used to always blow up RC Lemonade and try to buy his WR8 from him. Knights Customs also is jumping on board with the Utron 3D printed kit. Has all kinds of cool stuff, bits and bobs that I think that you will like if you have a 3D printer. I do not anymore. Mine blew up, so now I have to find a way to print all these things. Um, it comes with interior, racks, all that kind of thing. Reefs RC has the new Raw 100 or Raw 500 Brass Edition. I don't know if this is limited edition. I don't know what the deal is with it. It looks awesome, and it's going to throw some weight down low if you're running servo on axle or it's going to throw some weight above your axle if you want it that way looks cool it's got bling you know that's the kind of stuff that people go for uh, uh axial 10.3 square body this just came out today if you know if you're keen on when this is being recorded it's probably it's thursday Square body, K10, looks awesome. Basically the same uh, base camp underneath that you're all used to. And, uh, but the body looks sick. I really love the body. I love the body for a monster truck. So I think I might get the body just to do a monster truck with it. Axial Fest has started. I'm bummed I was not there and I wish I could be. Instead, I am going to another place and then I might have to go and sit with hundreds of kids and band-aids floating around in one of those awesome splash parks that every parent knows and loves. Very exciting. Not really. I'd rather be at Axel Fest sweating and driving my RC cars. But that's dad life, and that's also news in three minutes. We've got 30 seconds to spare, so how am I going to fill this up? I don't know. Go to my website. I don't have a website. Go to my Instagram. Go to my YouTube. Go buy stuff from our partners um, and use the codes. Listen to all the commercials. You'll love it. You'll save money. And we'll see you on the next episode of News. We need a name for it. Shoot me a DM for names. Five, four, three, two, one. And you can't even hear the timer. <laughs> That's awesome. This episode's brought to you by Die Hard RC. Are you into any kind of off-road RC? You need to stop by DieHardRC.com and check out the venue they have in Snohomish, Washington. If you're in the PNW, you definitely have to swing by and check it out. Look for their events. They're free to come and watch. There's a fee to play at the park, but it is so awesome. They have an eight scale dirt track, an off-road turf track. They have crawling, long crawling area uh, with a lot of scale village kind of things. And they also have a new bash park that has a new monster truck course in there. Go check them out, dieHardRC.com. And we hope to see you there. It's a very friendly or family friendly venue. Um, everyone's willing to help you out and get you started in the RC if you're just getting started. If you're a pro or if you're an uh, experienced RC, it's definitely a place to uh, go and have some fun. Welcome to Arts and Crafts, amigos. Just kidding. I need a name. I need, I need a segment name generator is what I need. Speaking of being creative... This is what we're talking about today, the creative process in RC. So there's different types of RC people, just like, I don't know, most of us are probably car people. And when we look at car people, we have the people that wash their car every day and love a pristine, clean car. And then they leave it at that. Then we have the people that maybe put some wheels on it and maybe put a stereo in it and, um, then they leave it at that. And I'm thinking like, you know, normal cruiser cars. Um, and then there's like Jeep people, right? That like, there's a, the mall crawler Jeep person that either buys it, fully kitted out, and they just drive it around on the street. Or there's the person that buys it, puts the bolt on stuff, very minimal fabrication. It's all bolt on, ready to go. And then they drive it around, it looks great. Um, and, and let me start 
talking about this now, there's no judgment on that because on any of this kind of stuff, I don't judge anybody's level of skill or whatever. It's their creative outlet. So for me being an artist and a creative person, more power to you. I think that's awesome to go ahead and go out and do that. So uh, getting back to, so we got the, the Jeep kind of person. And then let's break it into two paths. Then we have like the custom car and like the custom four wheeler kind of person. And these are like the, uh, I don't want to put a category to them because I don't want them to be like thought of higher than someone else. But these are the people that maybe put a little bit more thematic thought into their cars and maybe in vehicles and maybe put a little more experimental like fabrication meaning they might not know what they're doing but they're doing it anyway and they're kind of learning through that process and you know in the in the one-to-one -one world you don't have the ease of you know on a, on a RC car you could do that and and you can mess up and then you could just buy a new body or buy a new whatever and put it back together on one-to-one -to -one, it's a little harder so you have to have a little higher commitment level so I see this like with RC car people, right? You can equate the art, let's start, let's just stay, say the crawler route. Um, you can get the guy that gets a crawler RTR, runs at RTR like stock for a while and then changes the, we or changes the tires. And then after they change the tires, maybe they go for a motor and then maybe an ESC and then maybe wheels and then maybe they get a whole new Lexan and, and paint it the single color and then go, they got a new Lexan. So the creative process, I think, is a, it's a, quite the uh, puzzle. It's kind of a chess game. And I think people get scared of it. They have that analysis paralysis where they want to do something, they end up not doing it because they just don't know where to start, all that kind of thing. Um, first off, if you're that person, just do it. Just watch YouTube videos, reach out to some of the people that you talk to, or that you see that you like their stuff on Instagram or on Facebook or whatever, and ask them questions. And most of the time they're going to be more than happy to talk you through that process. But let's talk about like, I don't want to say the extreme aspect of it, but let's talk about the process of kind of like you've, you've gotten to that point and now you really want to test your skills or you really have a look in your head and you're like trying to figure out what to do. What I do is my creative process is that I go and I watch different YouTube videos of like one-to-ones or I'll go through Pinterest. Yes, I as a male go through Pinterest and I go through Instagram and I find images that are kind of like a library, right? In my design field, we call that a mood board and we get all these pictures and images of things you know, you might find a picture of a Jeep that has a specific part on it, and then you save that and you put that on your mood board. You might find a Jeep that you absolutely want to copy one, to, you know, tit for tat, then you'd save that and put that on your mood board. So I do that with all my cars. I, I think of, you know, um, I'll go way back. If you guys followed when I first started, I had one called the WRV. And that was the Walker Response Vehicle. And if you're into Walking Dead, right off the top of your head, you'd know that had something the name had something to do with it so i went and i wanted to make it kind of like a kind of like a post-apocalyptic like i wanted it to look like it was you know eight months into the zombie apocalypse like not any of these like mad max steel plates and all that but just like a a welding rig that kind of was a crawler and all that kind of thing so i went through and i i looked at you know different kind of patina treatments I looked at like blood splatters I looked at you know what kind of tires I wanted and back then the Voodoo Ot 6 uh, KLR M's I think they were were out and they were hot and they were a real tready tire real big lug it, they were the USD stickies that they were kind of modeled after so I put those on there um, painted you know painted everything to match it was kind of like this OD green color and then <clears throat> then the details started coming right so then i on the side of the door i thought "Ooh, this is so i used the, the vaterra k10 body and then on the side of the door i was like "Ooh, this should look like a kind of like a police car so i made a badge 
that was the badge that was after the Walking Dead when Rick was with the, uh, what was the police department? I don't remember the police department name, but it was something similar. So you hear that weird, awkward pause? Perfect example. Perfect example of the creative process. So, different day. I'm sure I probably sound a little different. <laughs> so it's a different day. I got a call right during uh, that recording, and it bumped my recording out. So that happens from time to time. And now I got my neighbor coming in, and that's another interruption. So we'll be back in a second. Third time's a charm, amigos. <laughs> that's, that's my life. That's why it's uh, hard to finish things for me creatively. So let's get back to this creative, uh, this what we were talking about, the WRV. It was the King County Sheriff, which is also King County here in Washington State, uh, the, the logo on the side. So I did that, you know, a detailed, that was the first like scalar that I did where I had an interior. Uh, and the interior was rad. I got it from Dinky RC, and it was for the Viterra K10 body. And then I put two drivers in it and did a dash on it and put glued stuff down to the dash. All kinds of details. It was very cool. And but that creative process, I guess, back to the process was I, you know, made a mood board, kind of made my notes. That, oh, that's the other thing. When you're doing things like this, like for instance in this situation where I just ta tried talking about it three different times and had to get pulled away, if you actually make notes, uh, it really helps out and so that you can go back to them and say, where was I, how do I start, all that kind of stuff. So um, make notes and then when your notes are there, then you can actually go back to them and reference them. You know, some of my projects uh, they take longer than they should just because of the time that I have to dedicate to them um, they're not like my work projects where you know I have deadlines and all that kind of stuff so I think that's the other thing that you have to do is exercise patience and don't sweat don't sweat it as much like if you exercise the patience that's the hardest thing I think in like artistic stuff and for um, anything really when it comes to making things is that you know if you can tell yourself I'm fighting this it's not exactly how I want it and I'm gonna table it for however long table it for a week or table it for a night or whatever ultimately in the long run that's gonna be what helps you out uh, that's gonna be what makes it so that you know you can take a breather from it and come back and uh, it, it's, it makes things a lot easier uh, when it comes to like I'm you know I'm gonna take you see things from a different perspective I guess um, what I mean and I think that's hard for people to see sometimes and to kind of see the forest through the trees as people say um, being able to see these things from different perspectives really helps you out when it comes to designing things for your for your scale car. Um, but then it's like, I guess the big thing is like where to start, right? So um, I would say, let's save that for the next segment of where to start. And we'll, we'll give you some key elements of, of, you know, how to start your custom build. guys welcome back it's another version of dads and cars making podcasts and today on this segment we're going to be talking about the creative process or my creative process and I have probably six steps to my creative process when it comes to our RC cars uh, 
it's hard because the process of being creative is not systematic. It doesn't always hit. You can't sit down and say, I'm going to make my list and go. It, a lot of the times it is spur of the moment. You get creative, you feel, you're feeling it and you get to go. The other thing that's difficult about it is case in point, uh, getting the time to do it. So I am making, I'm running an errand and I was like, Hey, I'm going to make an errand to run so I can bust out this segment on the podcast. Uh, my goal is to get a podcast up every Monday so that us working folk can uh, sit down and listen or work or drive and listen to a podcast. And uh, that way, there's something fresh every week. Um, not to be side tangent at all, but if you guys have, let me know. Like, send me a message, shoot me a DM, whatever. Let me know about this podcast. Let me know if you like this format, what style you want. If you want more dad stuff, if you want more life stuff, more current event stuff, all that kind of thing, let me know about that. Because I like talking about everything. Um, RC is obviously easy to talk about. Um, but yeah, I think it's, uh, I think this is fun and I think there's a lot of cool opportunities for this. So let's get back to this creative process. So number one, the first step I do on the creative process of where to start my build is pick a kit. So I either pick a kit or an RTR and then I start to utilize, I start to design around the benefits and the features of that RTR. So like for instance, or of that kit, like for instance, if I'm going with an element, uh, uh, what are they, Utrons, you know, obviously an IFS kit, there's some things that you could do that make it more scale or make it more presentable to your design. The other thing about, you know, an RTR, sometimes an RTR is a time saver, uh, but a lot of the times what you end up doing when you're doing a custom build is you, you start doing the, uh, the it's called R&R, you remove and replace. So you start to remove parts and components of that RTR and replace them with new parts and components, things that are in the next step, number two, but we'll get to that in a second. So the, on the kit build, you know, some advantages are you, they take, or advantage and disadvantage, they take more time, uh, but you get to put in what you want right off the top. And often the times you're buying a kit that will speak more to the build that you're trying to do. So like for instance, uh, you know, Axel has the, uh, is it the 10.3, the low CG, the pro kit? Uh, they have that, and that's more for a low CG type performance crawler. They have the 10.3 base camp, which is more of a trailing truck. I'm building one of those right now. Um, and, you know, those are two different types of vehicles. And then you have like the Enduro kit, which I always call the Swiss Army knife of kits because you can go so many different ways. And I, I love the Enduro kits just because of the components that come with them. And now, you can, I mean, the elements made it so easy to be able to make your custom cars with the components that they sell individually from Element. You can buy the new Stealth XF transmission from Element that has the all the factory team stuff in it. You can buy the components for the IFS2. And soon, I think in the fall, we'll probably be able to see the full IFS2 kit and the cool thing about the elements is they're all backwards compatible. So you can pretty much swap any part from any version of the elements and make them work. Um, you know, obviously you're going to run into wheelbase issues, that kind of thing. But that's that's not, you know, that's always contingent on a build, not really on the kit and on the process. So very cool I, I so the, that's the one that I get a lot of the times I'm interested on in building this base camp kit um, I think it's gonna be a good one so the next step number two uh, what do you want right I always think of the Ryan Gosling meme what do you want like when he's talking about that to his girlfriend in the notebook and she goes it's not that easy <laughs> and so I always give 
my daughter a hard time and I'm like, what do you want? What do you want to do? And she's like, it's not that easy. But so, you know, you've got to decide what you want. You got to decide, do you want a trail vehicle? Do you want a scaler? Do you want a performance like U4 type vehicle? Um, you know, that's why it's not that simple because I tend to kind of hamstring myself and try to make a truck do a little bit of everything. <laughs> and it's not always really good at one thing. And so, you know, they look good. A lot of the times the, the builds I do are, they look good, but they're not the best performers. I've had, I have a couple that are really good performers, but um, you know, they, they look good and they're more of like a scale kind of a trail truck type vehicle. Um, those are questions and ideas that you have to kind of answer for yourself and figure out what you're going to do with it. Uh, the other, you know, the, what's important about that is that also kind of goes hand in hand with picking your kit and the components. Uh, you know, if you want a scale, a scaler, you're not going to need like, you don't necessarily need a super creepy crawly high performance ESEN motor, but it's nice to have that in there, you know, and sometimes you buy the, the, like the ESE and the motor and you buy, like I'm starting to do a thing where I think I'm just going to have a set of four or five like running gear kits. And then when I'm done with the truck, I'll sell it as a roller and then I'll move on and take the guts out of that and put it in the next build. So, um, number three, we're moving on to electronics. So based on what you want, uh, you should build that package. So like we were kind of just talking about that. So, you know, like, uh, if you need high power servos, if you need a winch, uh, if you, how many servos you're going to need. I think that's one of the things that's tough right, right now about RC in general is that a lot of the vehicles that are out there have so many servos needed. And so it drives up the price of your car immensely. Um, if you're buying a kit version of it. So those I think are things that you have to identify and understand and talk about it. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the motor and ESC thing is pretty important because it also, you know, says about how far you're going to run. Like if you're trailing and you want to do a long trail thing, you know, do you want a brushless so it's more efficient or are you kind of just going short little bursts and do you want, you know, uh, brushed, so you know you it, you don't need to rely on it as bad and you can have a different price point or uh, for instance like an all-in-one do you want an all-in-one because you're doing a scale interior or do you not mind having a bigger ESC for the different uses you need so moving on to number four so now we've got the kit what do we want to do the electronics and number four is I go with the wheel and tire package. So I have an awesome set of wheels, like a library from Spec RC. Um, just gonna plug them today. Uh, so Spec RC makes awesome, awesome custom uh, CNC wheels. They are gorgeous. Hands down the best I've seen. They feel awesome. Their finish is amazing and uh, the styles are really good. So I generally base a lot of my stuff off the design cues of the wheels. And so once I start doing that, then it kind of snowballs. So, you know, <clears throat> for instance, if you're doing a scaler, you're gonna want a smaller tire or a more scale tread. If you're doing something that's a little bit more aggressive, you're gonna want a bigger tread. Like for instance, the base camp kit that I'm building right now, I want it to be kind of one of those extreme jeeps like uh like the youtube jeeper jeeps the ones that are like on rockstar garage type jeeps so i'm gonna go with a mickey thompson and i'm gonna go with a wide offset and just make it look beefy right so i have two options for that i'm gonna either gonna go with the rc four wheel drive or with the pro lines i love the pro line mickey thompson pro x's they're a little big, so depending on how I get the body that I'm using on it, uh, I'm going to decide which ones I'm gonna use for that. But 
the wheels are probably my my the the when we start doing real design cues um and then the next is the body and theme so some people would say start your theme off the front and sometimes i do sometimes you know i i pick my theme and i pick what i want to do and then i base all these uh vehicle or all these choices off of the theme so that's kind of you know back to number two what do you want um sometimes you can get your kit first and then you can build what you want after that but uh so the next number five would be the body so what body are you going to use you know dictates a ton of stuff and that dictates if you're using lexan if you're using a 3d printed body if you're going with a hard body it kind of starts getting the look from there and so uh, with this, then I start developing my paint and graphics, deciding if it's just going to be a single color, if it's going to be a multicolor, uh, what kind of graphics package I'm going to put throw at it, and what I'm going to design. And this is kind of getting into that like crazy, I wouldn't say crazy detail because I am by no means as good as some of these guys out there that have, you know, super scale stuff, but I just mean like the, the details of the theme, making it a consistent story from front to back of your car and side to side um, really goes a long way especially if you guys if you guys are doing like your concourse at your local events and you want to win make your theme consistent top to bottom left to right all that kind of stuff and you will have much more success I've seen a lot of cars that the craftsmanship isn't the best craftsmanship but the theme is dialed and that makes the whole the whole truck kind of work really well. Um, so the next thing you know I would do is do your wheels, do your uh, match your theme. Like so, your like your theme would be on the body would be like your shock package. You know what you want that to look like. If you want to paint your bead locks to match your wheels, how you're gonna do. Um, you know, if you're going to do like an exo cage, all that kind of stuff, um, that's the kind of thing where I think really sets people apart. And then the last one I always save for last is the details. So I get my truck pretty much done. And then I always go from there and go into like the little details, all the 3D printed stuff, the interior, um, what's going to be in the interior, what's going to be in the bed of the truck. I haven't done one of those in a long time, and I think that my next, this fall, we're going to do a, a scale one um, and try to do as much kind of detail as I can. I lose, I don't lose interest, but I lose time on, on the detail ones because I think they're amazing. I just, it takes so long to kind of fill them out, but that's, one of, that's why I keep the details for the last one because then I can get the truck on the road and I can just add stuff to it. And the more I add to it is the more, you know, con uh, consistent and the more comprehensive the theme follows. Um, I'm trying to think of an example. So like the Walking Dead truck that I did, you know, I had Negan's bat on the dashboard and I had, uh, you know, the, the stickers that detailed it. And on the bed of the flatbed truck, I printed diamond plate, but I printed like zombie gut remnants on the on the thing so it, you know it just kind of followed through with all that kind of thing so that is my creative process and for everyone else it can be different for everyone but you know I think if you start and you write a list down and you have these one through six things and you check them off and kind of like fill it in broadly it'll get you started and I'll get you in the direction of saying okay now I can do that in other episodes Something to look forward to is we'll talk about, you know, the design process of like your exo cage. Like, how do you start? Where do you start? Uh, what's a good, I think that's the hardest thing about building things like that is that you never know, like, do you start in the back? Do you start with the middle hoop? Do you start, you know, there's things like that that I think are difficult, but um, I have solutions for them. So if you like this, let me know. If you have questions, let me know. And on to the next one, guys.
Are you looking for something special for that special scale truck in your life? Head over to spec-rc.com and check out their one of a kind. Well, they're not one of a kind, but they are very limited run custom CNC wheels for crawlers. They have wheels for crawlers, um, wheels for the SCX6. Now he takes orders and he's got special uh, rings too. So put a ring on it with that. But he takes special orders. Um, you have to follow him on Instagram and on Facebook to see when the books are open. But then that's when you can order these wheels. And these wheels are gorgeous. We just talked about them in the creative process uh, part. And oh my gosh, um, he made a set of wheels for me that were blue anodized with red, I'm sorry, red anodized with machined pieces and blue rings and they are gorgeous and we used them for a Captain Insano build a year or two ago. So these wheels are amazing. Ask anyone who's got them. They are like the jewelry on your rig. Go over there, check them out and uh, get a set ordered up for them. All right, amigos, so that is episode number three in the books. Thank you so much for coming and or for downloading and listening to this podcast. It really means a lot to me. I hope to have this so that it can be, you know, some media for people just to have more RC in their life, more dad life in their life, um, just more things to talk about in general. Um, yeah, so I, I really enjoy this. I appreciate every single one of you that are listening. Uh, if you get a chance, you know, share it up. Tell some people about it. Uh, we, I'd love to get more people listening to this. So it's young, it's early, but I, the peop, it seems to be growing every episode. So um, it's just one more thing that you can listen to or, uh, you know, while you're working. I know that's what I do when I'm at the shop. I have podcasts on all day or I have videos on all day so it's just uh, something to pass the time hopefully it does that for you and like i said i'm very appreciative you can find us on instagram at rc underscore amigos on youtube at rc amigos or at rc underscore amigos and obviously we're on spotify and apple Podcasts. so check us out uh, some of the stuff that i talked about is actually video now on youtube um, and if it's not yet, look for it on the next one and we'll talk about it then. But thanks again to everyone. I hope you have a great week and we'll see you on the next one.